Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be trying to teach you guys Wonderlist in 10 minutes or less. So if you don't already know, Wonderlist is a to-do list tool. There are several out there, though Wonderlist is the one I've been using in the last few years. So Wonderlist obviously allows you to make lists that would pop up over here on that can sync between all of your devices, whether you have an iPhone, Android phones, uh, you're using Windows, or if you're just logging into it on the web browser through another operating system like Linux. In addition to simply creating tasks, you can also give them a due date, as you can see here. You can also share lists with other people. So if you have friends, coworkers, or family who need to have access to that list so that they can see what tasks are going on, uh, you can do that as well with the share button, which is up there in the top right hand corner. So any items that you haven't sorted into a list are going to by default pop into this inbox. Uh, items that you have to do today or that are overdue will pop up in the today calendar section. And items that are due this week will pop up in week. If you want to create a new list, at the bottom there's a create list button. You can also hit control L in order to do the same thing. If you want to, on Windows, uh, create a folder to organize multiple lists, you can right click on, say, uh, existing list and hit create a folder which will pop that list into a new folder. So we can call this created folder, I guess, or tutorial folder, or whatever kind of name makes sense to you. So when we go down to the bottom and we hit create list, you'll see that you can also give it a list name. So I'll just call this list two, but you'll see that there's also list members down here. So if you want to include someone else on your list by default, you can type their name or email address down here. So if you type in by name, it will try to look into names already associated with your Wonderlist account. So if you have a Google account and that's how you're logging into Wonderlist, I believe that that would allow you to pull up their uh, names and profiles in here. So if you have someone's email, just pop it in there and it should go ahead and send them an invite to participate in their list by email. So just go ahead and hit create when you're satisfied with the name and the people who are involved in that list. Uh, now let's talk about how to actually add items to a list. Well, there'll be this uh, giant bar here, kind of looks like a search bar, it will say add a to-do. If we type in any name for a project or a task we want to take care of, like let's say program the entire internet, if I can spell right, and then you hit enter, which is okay on mobile devices it will create that item and pop it into the list. Note that because we created this to-do item on a specific list, it doesn't show up in the inbox, but instead it's only in list two. Now, if I press on the item, we can set a due date and a reminder, which is a very helpful thing to have. So we can set this due for tomorrow by selecting the date. Once you've chosen the date, you can choose an exact time. So let's say 9 p.m. instead of 9 a.m. and then hit save and that's good. Now uh, you can also have tasks on repeat. So say you need to do something like the groceries every weekend, then you can set this for a specific day of the week. And then you could come down here to repeat and say every week, which will be the same day every week. Or you could have it every day, which it'll remind you to do that task every single day. Maybe you need to drink more water, who knows? Um, other examples might be if you need to do tax filing, then you could do repeat every year. For subtasks down here, this is where you would attach smaller but still checkable items that are part of the bigger tasks. So if I said program one website here and hit enter, it's going to pop up as a uh, basically an item we can check off before we check off the entire thing. So maybe the next one is bill client and then get new client. And so you can see you can create a list of these checkable items. And if you need to go back on something, you can just uncheck it. And that'll be useful to kind of combine multiple tasks into one. Another way of kind of doing the same organization would just be to have multiple of these tasks, but on a list. So it could be like work list or home list or school list, whatever you want. For add a note here, if you do add in a note, it will indicate that it has a note. So if I close this out now. So if you either add in subtasks or a note down here, which is just some text you want to associate with it, uh, it will have this little pin indication, meaning that there's more to this task in terms of information if you were to open it up, uh, then the title represents. So it's just letting you know there's more information down here. You can also add in files to this. So if you had like a form 
or a uh, project file, maybe a PDF that you needed to include in that task that other people could see it, that would be a really good place to do it. Adding comments, other people will be able to see that too, just another way of adding notes and letting people know who actually added the comment. So I'll just say comment, comment, and you can see it was created by me. Um, so a good team sharing feature there. And if you want to delete the uh, task, there's a trash bin item in the bottom right hand corner. Um, alternatively, if you want to make this a very high priority task, there's the star both up here in the edit window for that task, but also on the list uh, area as well. Whenever you check the star, it will be given a red banner, which means it's supposed to be higher priority. Uh, what exactly that higher priority means to you or your team is completely up to you. So if you have already decided to create a list and you forgot to include someone on that list, what you can do is you can select the list, go up here to share in the top right hand corner, and then you can just type in the list members in the same way that when you were actually creating the list. It's exactly the same pop-up window here. And once you've added in the people who need to be there, just go ahead and hit save. Over here in the top right hand corner, there is a sort button. So you can sort by priority if you have any items that are starred, creation date, due date, or ABC ordering. Whatever way makes sense to you, I would think most often you would want due date or priority. Uh, so let's just make this a start item so we can sort by priority. Okay, so another thing, if you've actually added in another person onto a list, one thing that will pop up when you open up these different list items is assigned to. So if you have other people working on that same list, you can pull this up and as long as they're involved in the list, you can assign it to them, which will show their associated little icon here. And you can always open it up to see the name of the person to do that task. It is possible to also set a custom avatar here. If you go up to the settings by clicking on your name and choosing settings here. So a couple more things really quick. Sync here if there are any items not showing up on your list, maybe someone else is trying to share the item with you and you don't see it, you can always sync or hit Control R on your keyboard. And there's this little search icon if you want to search through all your lists in order to find items that match a specific string or basically a name. So really that's just about everything there is to know about using Wonderlist. It's a pretty simple and straightforward app overall. But as you can imagine, having a to-do list that is available on all of your devices and can also be shared with other people is a very useful thing to have. So go ahead and check it out. I hope you found this video helpful. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.